Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. So I'm making this video on how to turn this duck. It's actually a dog toy. That was loud. And this vibrator into a motorized duck. I want to make this duck more realistic because my cat isn't that interested in it anymore. He was at first. Maybe if I put it to motion, then it's fun. Also, I just want you guys to know I have ADHD and I always go off on tangents. I do not have an engineering degree. I don't know any um, mechanical engineering methods and all this other stuff regarding gears. I actually spent two days researching gear terminology and then I scratched that plan. I have a whole page. I hate not knowing this. Um, it really hurts me, but anyways, this is my original design that had to be scrapped and I couldn't design with gears because I don't know gears. So this is my new plan. And with this plan, I actually just decided to to remove the um so the issue with this motor here is that it has a i guess a driver gear or driving gear on it and it's pretty well attached it's almost glued i couldn't pull it off see i still can't pull it off and i don't want to break the motor to try so this motor is actually more powerful and um which is a little scary because i don't want to like make this um insane or anything Anyways, I, I 3D printed a piece of plastic thing to fit right on. It's kind of snug, which is what I need. This motor shaft is a two millimeter shaft size. And then I had to take into consideration the size that this um, hole needs to be for the shaft to fit in it. And I wanted it a little bit smaller than the shaft, so I didn't make it two millimeters like the shaft. I actually made it 1.95 millimeters in the CAD software I'm using, which is not CAD, it's Fusion 360, but it's a form of CAD. CAD is like an official name of like that thousand dollar software, whatever it is now. Anyways, I had to use a diamond drill bit that I use for my bead holes and kind of drill out a little bit, but it's probably at this point, it's probably like 1.98 of a millimeter and it fits snugly on this shaft, which is why it's kind of difficult to pull it off as well as push it on. But I need that because that way it won't just fly off or it won't be pulled off easily when my cat plays with the toy. So I designed the shaft part, right? So this goes on the motor. Now I need the other part, which is this part that goes around the shaft that is going to be attached and the hole, the little holes here, the holes in this little thing here that I've just, oh, I can't even, oh. So in this design, this is the shaft here and this part is perforated. It has a bunch of holes that I'm going to sew the head, the circumference of the material of the duck's neck to, that way the duck's head will be stuck to this piece attached to the motor. And then this little piece here is, it, it has a hole in the middle, but it's like the same thing as this part. It's just a disc that has holes in it where I can sew the body of the duck to. And um, I'll use the holes and loop the thread through. There's gonna be half a millimeter uh, of free space between the shaft on this piece and the center of this. I don't know any of these technical terms because everything I wanna make is like a super highly technical mechanical and there's so many different like electrical engineering, mechanical engineering. There's so many facets to what I wanna learn to do what I wanna do. I'm just relying on Google to get me there. So um, join me on my journey to creativity. Ignorance will only be until I have learned and mastered the skill. Anywho, let's get to it.
Bruh. So I just finished printing the other piece. This is going to be sewn to the body of the duck. This is going to be sewn to the head of the duck. And they don't have to line up or anything, even though they do. This is what's going to spin, and it does, so that's good. Ooh, I can make a fidget spinner. So this is, okay. Um, this part will be in the body like that, right? And then the white part is where I'm going to cut. And then that is going to be uh, where this is going to be sewn on. And then it's going to go through here like that. Let's go ahead and chop us a duck head off. Did you know my dad taught me how to sew? It's a headless duck now. But, uh... This piece is going to go on the body and I made it just the right diameter. So we're gonna sew it on like this. And um, let me just go do that. I am using nylon thread. I guess I don't need to show you guys this. I half the time don't know what comes out of my mouth. When I just start running it, it just goes. So it's all sewn up and nice and sturdy. I took the stuffing out and we're putting the vibrator base into the duck. I don't need to attach this piece to this because um, the duck fur will do it for us. This is gonna sew on the duck's fur and then the head will sit here. I am using Velcro to sew onto the duck's stomach so that I can quickly access the battery compartment. You guys, I've actually never sewn on Velcro before, so this is another first for me. I mean, it's kind of common sense. Once you know how to like sew a few things, like you can basically, you know how to attach cloth together. I'm sewing Velcro, there's not much to it. I mean, I'm sure there's a right way. Um, like the more, well, this isn't the wrong way, but I mean, it's a way. <laughs> Pull out the little fur from the threads if you really want to hide this, but I don't really care. It does what it needs. I should probably stitch the other end to the inside of this. So I am soldering, um, this little thing, uh, to the negative lead, this end, but I have to make sure that when the motor goes into the, um, I guess, chassis or shaft, that it doesn't touch the, the negative doesn't touch the positive. If it does, it'll short the battery out. I don't have like actual soldering gloves, so I use like vinyl gloves so I don't touch the actual physical solder. So the thing about soldering is like sometimes things can like pop and go somewhere. So you gotta be very careful about what is around you so you don't catch it on fire or get lead particles or something in there that it shouldn't be in. Safety first, whenever you're working with a soldering iron, you need to wear gloves, preferably protective gloves, not these. So my soldering iron is very cheap and it is top heavy so I have to place a heavy jar or object on the cable as I'm working so it doesn't topple over. It was a bit hard and difficult soldering the lead to this aluminum little platelet so um, if I had some flux it would have been easier to merge the two metals but I didn't have any so... As I was soldering, I actually broke the positive lead from the motor, so I had to solder that on again, and I was able to hook it underneath, and then I realized that didn't work, so I had to cut the black piece entirely, expose the wires, and solder those underneath the curled piece. I 
I added duct tape around here so that it wouldn't really get fur stuck or lodged in here. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a lighter, since this is all nylon. What the heck is going on? Um, it's in the middle. Here I'm just going back over just to seal up some of the loose furs, melting the little plastic furs around. Do you ever feel like a duckling that is getting burnt to bed and he's not getting mad? Okay, there it is. Pretty neat. And let's go ahead and turn this thing over. It's still a good duck, you guys. Still a good duck. And the Velcro is here. So I know this is not the best way to build a motorized bird or animal, but I just used what I had around. Okay. But yeah, I made a moving duck, so let's go see what the cat thinks. So it looks like he eventually warmed up to the toy, but the only thing I don't like is that the motor completely stops when there is an inability for the duck's head to turn, like when it's laying down on the floor. That is probably because the motor is not getting enough power because it's a heavy motor and it's supposed to have more than 1.6 volts charging it and I'm only using 1.5. But, um, it's just a cat toy, so I'll definitely improve, um, other things in the future. <laughs> Okay, so five minutes later, it is still going strong, so I know this is pretty durable. I could make different prototypes on this, um, but there is no on-off switch, so I'm just going to have to uh, remove this. The way the lid is made, it like secures it um, when you twist it. That's the only way to turn it off is to take the battery out and untape it, but again, I can make an on-off switch later, but that is all, and it was a successful project, so stay tuned for more. Before you say I'd rather just buy one on Amazon, if you do it this route, not only do you have a cat toy that moves as you wanted, but you also have the skills, so you can't buy that on Amazon. Anyways, thanks for watching. You guys have a good day. Bye.